It is well known that lightning strikes produce intense electromagnetic waves. Electric power utilities know that if a lightning strike is close enough, electromagnetic waves will induce potentials onto power distribution lines which are sufficient to overwhelm the line's insulation. This is actually the most frequent cause of lightning-induced power failures on distribution lines. The phenomenon is quite well understood, and 1958 saw the introduction of the Rusk equation, which is still widely used today and allows for the calculation of the inducing potential as a function of the return stroke current, the height of the conductor, and the distance between the conductor and the lightning strike. For example, if you have a lightning strike with a return stroke current of 31,000 amps, that's about average and which is 125 meters away from a 10 meter high conductor, an inducing potential of 344 kilovolts will appear on that conductor. Fiberglass tanks are similar in height to distribution lines. Since fiberglass is a non-conducting material, the electromagnetic waves go right through it and any conducting parts, whether they're grounded or not, are vulnerable to sparking. Although in the lab it is not possible to reproduce a traveling wave of the magnitude that would be produced by a lightning strike, we can simulate the orientation and magnitude of the electric field component as it passes over the tank. A plain electrode made of a wire mesh and which is 10 meters in diameter is suspended 10 meters above the ground and 5 meters above a 5 meter high tank. An impulse generator is connected to the plain electrode and impulses whose peaks range from approximately 200 kilovolts to 1000 kilovolts and with a front of between 6 to 7 microseconds are applied. It can be shown using Rusk that this would be comparable to the inducing potentials produced by a lightning strike whose return stroke current was 31 kiloamps and at a distance ranging from 320 to 75 meters. Metallic pipes of varying lengths and diameters are inserted into the 5 meter high tank and grounded as per applicable standards. A coronascope or UV camera, which is particularly sensitive to the wavelengths produced by sparks or streamer discharges, is placed inside the tank and used to monitor for hazardous sparking. For the first sequence of the first test series, the camera is fixed upon a pipe inserted through the top center of the tank. The same sequence of tests was conducted on the two laterally inserted pipes with roughly the same results. Sparking continued down to an applied voltage of between 381 and 450 kilovolts. The following conclusions can be drawn from this first test series. Conducting components inside fiberglass tanks are vulnerable to sparking due to induced potentials. Grounding of the conducting components, while recommended for other reasons, does not prevent sparking due to induced potentials. In the second series of tests, the effect of overhead ground wires is investigated. Two half-inch diameter copper pipes are suspended from the plane electrode by insulating ropes and grounded to the laboratory floor through copper conductors. Due to the physical limitations of the laboratory setup, the grounded conductors are much closer to the tank than they would be in the field. This compromise has the effect of exaggerating their performance for these tests. However, there was still no significant improvement in performance as sparking continued down to applied voltages ranging between 303 and 478 kilovolts.
although overhead ground wires may act as effective lightning interceptors, they have no significant effect on preventing hazardous sparking due to induced potentials. It should be noted that, since overhead ground wires, which are meant to intercept lightning strikes, must be taller than the tanks they are protecting, they could attract more lightning strikes to the site and increase the tank's exposure to the effects of electromagnetic waves. A commercially available static dissipator is bonded to the grounded center pipe on the outside of the tank. Sparking continue to appear on that same center pipe on the inside of the tank down to an applied voltage of 350 kilovolts. Static dissipators have no effect on preventing hazardous sparking due to induced potentials. In the fourth test series, an attempt is made to simulate an in-tank static dissipator. A commercially available dissipator is bonded to a grounded copper conductor and inserted into the tank. Sparking continued down to an applied voltage of 253 kilovolts. Any conducting materials placed inside the tank, whether they are made of a metal or a carbon fiber, can be a source of hazardous sparking. It is therefore inadvisable to install anything which is highly prone to sparking, such as any device with a lot of sharp points. In the last test series, we deploy the streamer inhibiting electromagnetic shield by lightning electrotechnologies. Although installed as one piece for convenience in the lab, all components come in sections and the entire structure is bolted together and can easily be installed on any tanks already in operation. Tuned for lightning frequencies, the patent pending design is made to resist induced potentials beyond the capabilities of this laboratory and can suppress sparking on the inside of the tank due to all indirect lightning strikes with return stroke currents up to 250 kiloamps. The shield additionally employs the patented streamer inhibiting technology which further limits the tank's exposure to direct lightning strikes without increasing the height of the tank. Tests conclusively demonstrate that the use of the Lightning Electrotechnology Shield has a significant effect on preventing sparking due to induced potentials and will dramatically improve the lightning performance of fiberglass tanks. <laughs>